Hello everyone, I'm Bonnie and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It is Sunday, July the 11th, and today Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, The God's Grace. But first, please join us in some praise and worship to glorify the Lord.
The title of our message today is By the Grace of God. If you have your Bibles with you, please open them with me to the book of Matthew. We will start with chapter 19, the last verse, verse 30. And then we will jump to Matthew chapter 20, verse 1, all the way to verse 16. Matthew chapter 19, verse 30, and then chapter 20 verse 1 all the way to verse 16. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those who came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. 
These who were hired last work only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have been born, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hard last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This parable appears only in the book of Matthew, not in the other three Gospels. Its main point seems to be the graciousness and generosity of God. It is addressed to the complainers who just cannot handle this expression of God's grace. Whoever complains. Who were these complainers compared to where not mentioned in the parable? Except that they were said that those who complained in the parable of Jesus were the first ones hired. But according to the comparison that we have, it did not say who. Verse 1, the point of comparison this parable is already given in this verse. For the kingdom of heaven is like a who? A landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers. For his vineyard. We have several known informations about the landowner given, given in the parable. One of them is that he owns a huge land, a huge vineyard. Secondly, he has plenty of work that he needs many, many, many workers in his vineyard. And another one, he got lots of money to pay his workers. He can pay whatever he wanted for his workers. And the other one that is known is that he is gracious and generous to whoever he wanted to. In Jesus' time, the marketplace was where people who are looking for work would gather. Men would go to the marketplace to wait for someone to offer them a job. The men are at the mercy of those who will come and look for workers. It is a great blessing to them when offered a job for the day. And then let's go to verses 2 to 7. A landowner went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. Verse 3, about 9 in the morning, He went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. Maybe playing with their thumb. (laughs) Doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long not doing nothing? Because we, no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. According to our parable, there were men who were hired at different time of the day. Those who were hired at six and then at 9, and then at 12, and then at 3, and then again at 5. The first group was hired at 6 in the morning. Maybe this group of men was up early to go find work, while the others still slumber and sleep. When they were hired, they negotiated their wage for the day, a denarius. A denarius was the normal wage of a day's work in the time of Jesus. It is a fair wage. Even Roman Roman soldiers received a denarius for a day's wage. Then the landowner went again to the marketplace at 9 in the morning and found men doing nothing without waiting to be hired for work. 
He promised to pay them whatever is right. And so, there is no contract about a denarius paid for a day. So, whatever is right. Not a denarius, but because the day is already part done. This group of men trusted, believed in the fairness of the landowner. Again, the landowner went out at about noon and again at three in the afternoon and did the same thing. There was no contract of receiving a denarius but to trust in the fairness of the landowner. At about five in the afternoon, the landowner did the same thing. This means that this group of men will only work for one hour. Maybe there was more work to be done or the landowner had mercy and compassion to these men who did not find work for the day. What will they feed their family would be a big question for these men who were hired at five in the afternoon. There will be hunger in their household. Maybe there was more worry about what to give their children for dinner that day. This group of men might have thought to just get a small amount for an hour of work. Just to, rip, to, just to receive something in order to buy maybe a loaf of bread for their family. They had no way of knowing what the landowner will pay them. The good thing is these men were ready to work. They depended on the grace of the landowner. The landowner could have ignored those men who found, he found later in the day. But he did not ignore them. He talked with them. And said, okay, go also to my vineyard and work for me. He hired them. It's a grace, pure act of grace, when he told this man to go and were hired. Verses 8 to 14. The day's work was done and the time comes to pay the workers. This is the good part of the day, isn't it? To be paid to receive your denarius. What, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But it's one of them also received a denarius. When they receive it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Do these who were hard last work only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hard last the same as I gave you. So at pay time, something out of the ordinary happened. The landowner called the foreman to pay the workers, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first. The workers who were hired at five in the afternoon received their pay. A denarius. When those who were hired at six in the morning saw how much those who were hired last received, they were smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> you know why? They calculated how much they would receive. If those who only work one hour, receive a denarius, how much would someone receive who worked 12 hours on that day? <laughs> how much do you expect if it's you? Ding, 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 there's the calculator in your brain. A denarius for those who work one hour, so I will receive how much? Wow. <laughs> and so maybe they were secretly smiling and elbowing its other. Yay! We will receive more. 
12 hour job, 12 denarii. It ended up that the landowner pays everybody a denarius. Bummer. Beginning with those who were hired last, ending with those who were hired first. Those who were hired at 6 in the morning lost the smile on their faces. <clears throat> and were replaced with a frown and an anger. Remember, it says they began grumbling against the landowner. Remember that those who were hired first were the only ones with an agreed pay. Those who were hired at 6 in the morning were the only ones who said, okay, one, dinar one denarius for every one of you. And they said, okay, sure. And maybe they even signed on the contract. Those who were hired later depended on the fairness and generosity of the landowner. What was the problem here? Let us go back to verse 12 and see the problem. These who are hired last work only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Did you hear their complaint? What was their complaint? You have made them equal to us. That was the complaint. You have, made, you have made them equal to us. May I ask you, how would you feel about that if you were the ones who were hired first at 6 in the morning? Personally, this is just my personal opinion, and it doesn't matter my opinion, I would sympathize with those who were hired at 6 in the morning. How about you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They work 12 hours in that day and they receive the same pay. You have made them equal to us. But now let's go back to two more verses, to verse 10. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. That is the reason why they grumbled. Why did they grumble? They expected to receive more. They expected to receive more. I would give you an example. And this is just an example. I made, this, I made up this story, okay? You work hard for 25 years in a company. 25 long years. You spent sleepless nights working on projects. You missed some quality time with your children. You sacrificed holidays and vacations just to keep the company going. And then one day, here comes this young and experienced dude. He wore t tennis short, uh, tennis shoes, I should say, blue jeans, and a sports jacket. The company owners made him executive director of the company and you who worked there for 25 years his assistant how would you feel about that uh, some of you said mm -mm. I wouldn't like it I'm sure you won't like it I won't like it too nope the difference between you and him were the letters after his name. After his name are the letters P-H-D. Like wow! That's the difference right there. And to you, it does not seem right. You bore the burden of the company to keep it going. You work so hard. But then here comes this P-H-D becoming your boss. You would complain, if not loudly, at least deep within you. You will grumble too. Now let's go to verses 15 and 16. The reply of the landowner shows his grace and generosity. 
Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The problem of the complaining workers is not against their co-workers, no? Their complaint was directed toward the landowner. According to verse 15, the problem of the complaint was envy. Envy to the generosity of the landowner. Now let me go back to verse 1. Here comes verse 1 again. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. So this parable is not about the workers. This parable is about the landowner who represented the kingdom of God. It is about God. It is about God's grace, not about the grumbling, complaining workers. Matthew chapter 19, verse 30, because I added this, this, uh, this verse to be my first verse because it adds up the story. It completes the story. Chapter 19, verse 30 of Matthew said, But many who are first will be last, and many, many who are last will be first. And verse 16 of our chapter said, So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The very last verse of the parable gives a hint of what the parable meant. These two verses gave us the context of what Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of God. Both the first and the last will enter the kingdom of heaven. Both of them. You came in early, you came in late, it doesn't matter. You will enter the kingdom of heaven. You serve God early in your life or you serve God late in life, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't matter. Both will enjoy the kingdom of God prepared. Now you like it, isn't it? <laughs> but it is not a license for you to believe God later on in your life. Because you do not know what will happen next. After you get out of the doors of this sanctuary, and you said, oh, if I will enter late, I will go into the kingdom of God anyway. So I'll just relax and sit down for now. No, that's not what this parable meant. Everyone will enter God's kingdom, yes. He is gracious enough, yes. You will wait until the last breath of your life, no. That is not what this parable meant means. Entering the kingdom of heaven is not by human effort. That's what it means. Entering the kingdom of heaven is purely by the grace of God. That's what it means. Woohoo! If it's by human effort, nobody can enter the kingdom of God. But by God's grace, those who will believe in Him, then whoo, they will enter wherever you enter the kingdom of God early in the morning, 6, at 9, at 12, at 3, at 5, it doesn't matter. You will be given God's grace. Wow. So entering the kingdom of heaven is purely by the grace of God. It is only by the landowner's generosity. And who is the landowner? It's God. God is the landowner in this parable. No one deserves and earned their way to heaven. No one, even though you are rich and poor, handsome or ugly, fast or furious, it doesn't matter. You cannot earn your way to the kingdom of God. It is only by the grace of God. So whoever you are watching this video today, or to us here at Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It is only by the grace of God. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Because if it is through our own efforts, 
we can't do it ourselves. Please forgive us of our sins if that hinders us from entering your kingdom. Remove anything that block our entrance into your kingdom. Help us, O Lord, by your grace, only by God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our Sunday service. If you have been blessed by today's message and you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene 8499 North Dort Highway, Ma Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our patron page, which is located at patroncom.mosaic. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on North, Di North Door Highway, Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.